Mercenary incursion in Mean. A mercenary group has been intercepted by security forces in the Mean system. Security Chief Harper Vergas of the Mean Defense Force reported. Six hours ago, our forces were attacked by a small fleet belonging to a known mercenary group. Fortunately, we were able to defeat them before they could do serious damage. There is no doubt that the mercenary's primary target was Phoenix Base. We suspect that this incident is connected to an attempted raid on the base that was repelled a few weeks ago. Lee Yong Rui, CEO of Sirius Corporation, addressed the incident. I'm relieved that the attack was foiled, but this only demonstrates how precarious Ramtar's situation is. I urge him to accept my offer to work with the Sirius Corporation, not only for his own safety, but also to safeguard future Guardian human technologies. Spy robot investigation redirected. The Federal Security Service has abruptly terminated its investigation of the Mars Tribune regarding personal administration robots fitted with hidden surveillance programs. Although interviews with Tribune employees were underway, it has been alleged that a senior figure in the FSS ordered the task force to focus elsewhere. The Tribune's owner, billionaire Kingsley Cordova, stated, I'm pleased that our innocence has been accepted, and I'm confident that the guilty... will soon be found. An opinion piece in the Federal Times from Chief Editor Lena Ravenhill took an alternative view, however. Last week, Cordova suggested the spy robots could share the many secrets they've gathered, and suddenly the FSS is ordered to leave the Mars Tribune alone. Does anyone really think this is coincidence? How many powerful people are frightened of what Cordova might reveal about them? We can review. Here are this week's major stories. The investigation into the death of Alliance presidential candidate Fazio Focus elsewhere. Recent reports from the Garas system indicate that after a spate of reciprocal attacks, hostilities between Garas First and Nudu's in State Incorporated have escalated into all out war. The warring organizations have issued calls to independent combat pilots for support. Commanders who participate in the conflict will be generously rewarded by their chosen faction. Finally, Senator Caspian Leopold has announced that his appeal for received by the galactic community. A spokesperson for the senator said that a humanitarian crisis had been narrowly averted, while assuring refugees at Leopold's rehabilitation center that new homes would be found for each and every one of them. And those are the main stories this week. Ramtar rejects Sirius Corp. The engineer Ramtar has rejected an offer from the Sirius Corporation to support the manufacture of Guardian Human Technology. In a public statement, he said, these technologies, developed using principles discovered by the Guardians, are too important to become corporate products. I have no doubt that Sirius would aim for maximum profits, rather than using the knowledge to aid humanity. Using tech brokers to distribute the designs allows them to be widely available, and thanks to the generosity of Aegis, the tech brokers' costs have been reduced, making Guardian human fighters and systems more affordable. Li Yong Rui, CEO of Sirius Corporation, has stated that his offer remains open, and that he... All clear. Be good out there, Commander. Oops, Ramtar will have a change of heart. Conflict in Garas. 
Recent reports from the Geras system indicate that after a spate of reciprocal attacks, hostilities between Geras First and Naduzin State Incorporated have escalated into all out war. According to Donal Varden, an independent journalist, for several months we've seen these factions snipe at one another from the shadows, but now the st have been raised. It won't be long before the space lanes of Geras are littered with the burned out shells of dead ships. The warring organizations have issued calls to independent combat pilots for support. Commanders who participate in the conflict will be generously rewarded by their chosen faction. Both factions have set out week-long operations to take control of the system, which will begin on the 1st of November 3304. Appeal for aid complete. Senator Caspian Leopold has announced that his appeal for aid, in association with the Nephil Hell Guardians of Tradition, has been enthusiastically received by the galactic community. Hundreds of pilots supported the initiative by delivering commodities to Biruni Port, and by protecting traders in the Nephil Hell system. A spokesperson for Senator Leopold made the following statement, thanks to the work of many brave pilots. humanitarian crisis has been narrowly averted. Senator Leopold has expressed his gratitude to all those who contributed to the campaign, and has assured refugees at his rehabilitation center that new homes will be found for each and every one of them. Pilots who contributed to the initiative can now collect their awards from Biruni Port, in the Nephil Hell system. The rise of Nova Imperium. A radical group called Nova Imperium is gaining influence throughout the Empire. Imperial Herald journalist Cassio Carvalho highlighted the situation. Nova Imperium claims that to survive the Thargoid conflict, the Empire must sever contact with all other systems and concentrate on protecting itself. In recent months, the organization has become a genuine political force. The group's leader is known only as the Imperator. Dressed in an Imperial Navy uniform, he is a charismatic presence who speaks of a return to the honor of the old days and the glory of Akanair. Many traditionalist citizens, unhappy with recent cross-superpower cooperation, have embraced the Imperator's rhetoric. On several worlds, Nova Imperium's followers hold rallies with a distinctly martial feel. So far there has been little response from Imperial authorities, but it is clear that Nova Imperium will soon become impossible to ignore. No leads in Fazia Silva case. The investigation into the death of Alliance presidential candidate Fazia Silva has concluded. No convictions have been made. Inspector Aaron Sangster of Alliance Interpol made this statement. The death of Fazia Silva has been officially ruled as homicide. The use of a sophisticated nerve toxin and the circumvention of security at Hume Orbital suggests the involvement of one or more professional assassins. Unfortunately, we have now exhausted all possible avenues of investigation, and are left with no option but to consider the case closed. President Gibson Kincaid told the media, I have no doubt that the murder of Miss Silver was designed to disrupt our democracy, and I will not rest until the Alliance's enemies pay for their crimes. Tashmira Silver has now assumed permanent control of her late sister's corporate empire. Week in Review Here are this week's major stories. The Alliance Assembly has decided not to adopt President Gibson Kincaid's proposed changes to the Constitution, and has ruled against imbuing the role of President with executive powers. The Assembly has agreed to update the role, however, with the creation of a new non-political department known as the Office of the Alliance President. The presidential term has also been extended to three years. The Sirius Corporation has publicly offered to work with Engineer Antar in the development of further Guardian human technology. Some business analysts have advised Ramtar to take advantage of the offer to mass-produce his designs, while others have warned that Sirius Corp is seeking a monopoly over Guardian human technology. As yet there has been no response from Ramtar. Several digital crimes, including the theft of a billion credits from Zachary Rackham, have now been attributed to a mysterious criminal organization known only as The Collective, a band of anti-authority activists who believe that all information should be publicly available. Security forces have launched investigations into the group. Meanwhile, as the Federal Security Service continues its investigation into the Mars Tribune, 
The newsfeed's parent company, the Cordova Group, has filed a formal complaint. Kingsley Cordova, billionaire owner of the Mars Tribune, said the accusations were an insult to the publication's integrity. Imperial Senator Caspian Leopold has launched an appeal to help those affected by Thargoid attacks. While the Senator's Rehabilitation Center has helped hundreds of thousands of refugees, it seems further aid is needed to avert a humanitarian crisis. Finally, the Palin Institute's appeal for Thargoid materials has been enthusiastically received by the galactic community. Professor Cora Shaw thanked those who supported the Institute's latest scientific initiative, which will aim to advance understanding of the Thargoids. And those are the main stories this week. Alliance Assembly Revises Presidential Role The Alliance Assembly has concluded its debate over President Gibson Kincaid's request for executive powers. Prime Minister Redmond Mahone announced the decision. The Assembly has voted that President Kincaid's proposed changes to the Constitution will not be adopted, and no executive powers will be granted. There was broad agreement, however, that the role should be updated, which has resulted in the creation of a new non-political department, the Office of the Alliance President. The President will now oversee a team of ambassadorial emissaries who will focus on diplomatic functions. This will free up council members, allowing them to govern more effectively. The presidential term has also been extended to three years. President Kincaid told the media, I regret. makes public offer. The Sirius Corporation has publicly offered to work with engineer Antar in the development of further Guardian human technology. Lee Yong Rui, the corporation's chief executive officer, made this statement. Ramtar's research into the Guardians is of central importance to humanity's future, and I would therefore like to place the resources of the Sirius Corporation at his disposal. As the recent incident at Phoenix Space illustrates, Ramtar's operation is currently at risk. Not only can we guarantee his safety, but with our manufacturing capabilities we can bring the benefits of Guardian technology to the whole galaxy. There has been a range of reactions from business analysts. Some have advised Dramtar to take advantage of the offer to mass produce his designs, while others have warned that Sirius Corp is seeking a monopoly over Guardian human technology. As yet there has been no response from Ramtar. Repairs to his base in the mean system have been completed following an attempted incursion by armed intruders. Mars Tribune refutes allegations. As the Federal Security Service continues its investigation into the Mars Tribune for illegally obtaining the private information of federal citizens, the newsfeed's parent company, the Cordova Group, has filed a formal complaint. The FSS has established that the administration robots of dozens of public figures and wealthy individuals have been fitted with hidden surveillance programs, and that these programs may be the source of several scandals exposed, exclusive.
Checked your bay number. Check again. Unauthorized ordering may trigger a legal response.